Okay, that was nice. Thank you. See you at bingo. <laughs> so, um, helps if you turn it on. <laughs> I'm Dave. I work at Dot Control, multi award winning agency since yesterday. <laughs> I've been an Umbraco MVP for eight times now. And I've been working with Umbraco since 2008, late 2007. I'm also part of 24 Days in Umbraco, the calendar at the end of the year where we publish a an article related to Umbraco each day leading up to Christmas. So if you want to write for us, come find me this evening and we get you listed as one of the artists for this year's edition. And I'm also an honorary member of the Umbraco community packages team. But before we go into what Models Builder uh, does and what benefits it brings you, I want to take you on a brief history lesson about Models Builder. Models Builder was first released in 2014 uh, by a, a former HQ employee, Stefan, and it was called ZBU Models Builder at that time. And it was different from what Models Builder is now. It came with a, a nice Visual Studio extension that you connect to your Umbraco in installation and you could say, click on a folder and say generate models and it would generate all the models and include it in your CS project file. And yeah, people thought it was really useful. So in 2016, it got rebranded to Umbraco Models Builder and actually got shipped with Umbraco 7.4. But it was still a separate open source package maintained separately from the CMS. But in 2020, I think it was around the time that Stefan left, uh, a slimmed down version of Models Builder was embedded into the Umbraco core. And slimmed down, uh, that means the Visual Studio extension was removed, and also the way you can extend models uh, was changed because the old package brought a lot of dependencies like a Roslyn compiler to do models generation, and this is now changed in core, so they have less maintenance work on this because if you bring a lot of dependencies, it decreases the maintenance. So now we're going to see how Models Builder work. Are there people that use model, Models Builder in their project? It's about 50-50, I think. So model builders actually generate partial C-sharp classes uh, for each document type in your Umbraco installation. And depending on what mode you use, uh, it will generate a file with the doc type alias as a name and then generate a .cs. And the generated class will inherit from published content model or published element model, and that's depending how you configure your doc type. If you switched it on to be an element, then it would be published element model. And each property on your doc type will also be a C sharp proper, a property in your C sharp class with the correct type uh, that the property value con uh, converter returns you. And for some uh, property editors, uh, this is really useful because, for example, the multi URL picker. Depending on the configuration, it returns a single link object or, or an I enumerable of link objects. So a uh, generated class looks a little bit like this. Uh, it starts with uh, an attribute on, on the class, published model, with uh, the alias of the document type. It also creates a constant string in the document type, uh, in, the, in the class with the, with the alias. Then the properties are generated as virtual properties with the correct type, and then it calls the value from your content model. And because it's virtual, this is also very useful when you are doing unit testing, you can mock those properties. Uh, document types, uh, you can inherit document types. I don't think many people still do that, but it will also do the C-sharp inheritance. So if you, for example, would have created a new document type that would inherit from the blocks document type, you will get the same inheritance in C-sharp. But we also have compositions in Umbraco, and you can compose a document type out of several other document types. And Models Builder will generate an interface for a document type that you use as a composition, but it also generates a concrete class uh, implementing that generated interface. And each document type that uses your competition, uh, composition will also implement that interface. And all the properties on your uh, 
concrete doc type of your composition will get a static method on it for getting that property. And that will also be used in the composed document types to get the value. I think seeing the code will make more sense than what I'm saying. So we have the co in the starter kit, you have a content base uh, composition with a body text property on it, and it just will generate an interface for that. And then also in the same file, it will generate a concrete class implementing that interface. And you, as you can see here, it also creates a static method for getting the body text, and the actual property uses that uh, method to get the value. Then if we look at the content page, which implements this composition, there you can see it uses the static class, uh, the, method, the static method on the content base class to get the value. Also, uh, the properties, when you generate them, they get an implement property type with, with the alias. And that's something I think that's left over from the old models builder because I couldn't see anything in the code that do still does it. But with the old models builder, you could tell it when you extend the model with that property, with this property, that it shouldn't generate it, but that you implement it yourself. So that is where it's coming from. And Models Builder comes with several configuration options. And if you look, this is the default configuration. You put it in the Umbraco CMS Models Builder. And I think if you install it, uh, there's, it's not present, so it uses this configuration. So let's have a quick look through all the options. The first one is Models Mode. And with this one, you actually tell Models Builder how to generate and when to generate the C sharp classes. And one of the options is nothing. And with this one, there will no models will be generated. And it's actually the recommended setting for production sites and uh, or non-development sites. Or if you're not using Models Builder, just turn it off. It doesn't make sense that the default setting has an overhead. And the default setting is in memory auto, but we used to call pure life in the older versions. That's why my title was Beyond Pure Life, because Beyond In-Memory Auto doesn't sound that nice. <laughs> and with In-Memory Auto, each time you change a document type or a data type in Umbraco or a media type, member type, everything that defines your schema, the models are generated, compiled, loaded in, into memory, and yeah, there's a performance hit, especially if you do a deployment with document type changes. It, it has to do the compilation, and each time you change something, but we'll have to do the compilation again, the generation. And there are also other downsides on this mode. Uh, you only can use the models in your views. There's no IntelliSense for them. And if you use this mode, you cannot uh, set Umbraco the runtime mode, which is introduced in 10.2, I think, to production. And that's something you should do because that increases your performance. Also, you cannot compile your views if you use this mode as well. The next one is uh, source code manual. And actually what this means is you have to go into the back office, go to the Models Builder dashboard and, and click a button, generate models, and then it will generate them uh, for you. And this one is very similar to that one. It's source code auto, but it will generate the models immediately if you change something in your schema but you have to compile the models yourself, just like with source code manual. You also can change the, the namespace where that the models use. The default one is Umbraco CMS Web Common Published Models, so, but you can use your own uh, namespace. And if you use source code manual, uh, this setting can come in handy as well. If you set that to true, the dashboard will will say if you, uh, your models are out of date, because you can change document types or data types, but it doesn't generate the models again, so they are not in sync with your configuration, and the dashboard tells you then which ones are uh, not in sync. You also can change the directory where the models are, are uh, generated. By default, they are in the Umbraco folder, and that one is, I think, excluded in the default git ignore that comes with Umbraco. And you also, if you use, for example, in memory auto, you shouldn't include them in source control as well. And 
Sometimes you want to generate your models outside of your website project. Then you have to set this setting to true, and then you can create a relative path to the folder where you want to generate them in another class library. So you can use them in the class library as well. And this one can come in handy uh, when you're in development. If you increase the, the value to something higher than zero, you get additional logging when models are generated. But for production sites, this should be set to zero if you don't have your models mode set to nothing. <laughs> so there are also a lot of benefits when you use a Models Builder. For example, I think most of you will recognize this syntax, eh? model.value with the property alias. And then I see that on the form, people casting it to the correct object or using the generic overload where you specify the type. But you have to maintain all those aliases everywhere. Sometimes people move them to constants, but yeah, it's easy to make a typo in an alias and then you're wondering why don't I get a value back and it's something you overlook really easy, and you have to know which type uh, your property editor returns. If somebody changes the conf configuration from, for example, uh, a single URL to a multi-URL, the type change and your code will break at runtime and not at compilation time. So with Models Builder, you just say it, I'm rendering a blog page here, and then you can just say model.pagetitle, and underneath it will get the value out of uh, the content model. Benefit is, here is if you compile your views, then uh, when you, the type is changed and you use the object that you're getting wrong, then you will get compilation errors and instead of runtime errors. Also, when you query Umbraco data, you don't have to use uh, aliases for your document types anymore and for uh, your properties. But the models builder, the same thing looks like this, which in my opinion is a lot cleaner. And also, sometimes in your master pages, you will do some type checking. You want, want to render an extra section or something when there's a certain type of page. With the normal syntax, you check for is document type, you have to put in the alias again. With Models Builder, you just can check, is it this model type? And then you actually can already create, can get a, a variable that is casted to that model. Same goes when you are checking if a document type is composed of, a, of another document type. Again, you have to uh, know the alias of the do, um, document type. With Models Builder, you can just check if it implements a certain interface. So, and this is one of the coolest parts of Models Builder, that's that you can extend your models. Because they are generated as partial classes, you can create another file with the same uh, partial class name in it, and then you can add your own custom uh, methods and properties. Uh, there are some things that you cannot do. You cannot add properties with the same name that, in, that are in the generated file. You cannot have to, a constructor with the same signature. So that's something to, to think about, but you will see that you will get compilation errors. I don't even think Models Builder can generate the class anymore if you do that. So I extended my content page. I want to check if the page, the page title is checked, so I don't have to do string as null or white space in all my views. I just has a property. I now have a property on my content page which says has a page title, and I also want to do set a browser title, and I want it to be the page title, but if that is not set by editors, I want it to fall back to name, so I added a special browser title pop property that, that does that check for me. So you move some logic out of your views and keep your views very clean. There are also some things that you shouldn't do. Uh, you should avoid creating properties that query the content tree, for example, going down, uh, getting all news items from another I, uh, proper uh, content item or going up to get a home page item because people will use those uh, models in loops or, or in a, for each loop and maybe will access this property that you created and don't see th that there's a query going on behind it. So if you are looping over 1,000 news items, it will go get a, the home page, for example, 1,000 times. 
and then when you find it out, you think it may be smart to do it once and store it in a private variable, but since Umbraco 10, this has changed, uh, these, these values are now cached uh, together with the model and the cache. And Umbraco 9, this wasn't the case, and we found out the hard way. <laughs> and for example, this is what you shouldn't do. For example, I created a private variable homepage, and then in my property, I check if that is null, then I will get the homepage using ancestors, and I will return the current homepage. Let me quickly show what happens if you do that. Um, I here have a, a page, and I just render the public update date from the home page twice, once from the property on the model, and once I just get it in the view using model.ancestors. So you see it's the same now, but if I go in here and I created a site using the excellent package uh, script writer from Paul, so everybody knows what my password is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. <sighs> if I now just save and publish the home page, you can immediately see what is going on. The one from the property on my content model just keeps showing the old date to while, while it actually has changed. And especially if you're going to get content, the content can be out of date. So that's something you have to be very careful with. Like I said, we found out the hard way on an awards-winning site. <laughs> <laughs> so let me quickly go back to the presentation. Um, when you're generating uh, your views, I do it this way. I, s I generate my uh, models in a folder called models.generated. That contains my generated models. And in the models folder, I set all my partial classes where they extended, so there's a nice separation between the two. If you don't want to do that, you can also nest them in Visual Studio. I don't know if that is visible on the screen, but the content page is a my own partial class, and it has the generated one nested beneath that. And you can do that by putting a little bit of uh, syntax into your project file, and then it will nest them for you. Did you get the picture? <laughs> so, but there's also a possibility to generate your custom models. And one way to do it is to use uh, a custom package called model Limbo Models Builder. I haven't used it myself. I know it's out there. It's on my to-do list to test it out. And there you can influence how models are generated. But since Umbraco 11.4, there's a new interface in Umbraco called iModels Generator with one method, Generate Models. I think it came out of a PR from Leonard. He did a small PR on the existing Models Builder in Core to also generate the property aliases as constants on that. That led to a discussion on how they should be named, where they should be generated, and I, eventually the PR got closed, and this model, uh, iModels generator uh, interface got introduced. And now you can roll out your own model generator, and actually you could, if you want, bring back some functionality of the old uh, open source package. And I created a models builder special for today, so let me see. I just go into Visual Studio. I prepared it already. And I tell Umbraco to use my visual, uh, models builder. We now rebuild the website. And go here, and I hope everything goes OK. Live demos. It will replace all text strings. It doesn't pick it up. <laughs> I think I should rest uh, restart it completely, I think. It worked at home, but normally, all uh, the text strings should be replaced with uh, welcome to Code Garden, although it's over. <laughs> I'm 
no clue why it's not working. <laughs> Sorry, live demos <laughs> can fail. So I tried to keep it short and fast because I know everybody's waiting for uh, Bingo to start. So thank you. Uh, you can find the code of the not working custom models builder <laughs> on my GitHub repository. <laughs> and also the, uh, there's a link to the slides if you want to see them again. And if you have questions, I will be here all evening, probably till it closes. So come find me. 